All right, so next pose, you're going to use the blocks on either side. You're going to take your right leg forward. Mm -hmm. Left knee and thigh on the ground, and the blocks are here. And from here, I want you to lift your navel in and up. So you're going to support your lumbar from the sides of your belly, sides of your navel, okay? And we'll do a lunge on this side, and you go out and in, and let me show you with the other leg. So I'm pulling in and up. Go in a little bit into the lunge, pull out a little bit, go in a little bit, pull out a little bit. Alright, let's do it. You want to start, everyone, listen. Start with your knee over your ankle bone. And the rear knee slid back as far as it'll go comfortably, keeping the knee over the ankle bone. So then when you back out and go in and back out and go in, you won't overextend the knee. Front. You can slide this way back a little bit. You can make the brick taller. The brick has several heights, right? It has more than one height. Mm -hmm. Right, and then the right leg goes, uh, left leg, no, let's see. Go straight back behind you. Now find the parallel lines of your belly and take your navel in and support your lumbar spine. Okay? Support your lumbar spine. That's it. And you back the hips up as you inhale. Keep lifting the navel. Pull your tailbone down toward the floor as you bend the knee forward. And go in and out of the long stretch on your left thigh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's even. Okay. Right. Come up taller on your bricks. Okay. Now, lift your navel in and up, pull your tail down, and then bend the front knee. Mm -hmm. Keep your hips square. That's square. All right, in and out. And then inhale. And let's come out of the side and do the second side. So step back. Wait, pause a moment, take a breath. And then do the other one. Uh -huh. So think about squaring your hips. So when you back your hips up, back up your hips. Think about squaring your hips. Ace, I know, very difficult. Pull your tailbone down. Lift your navel in and up so you're supporting your spine and your sacrum, and then go into the lunge. And back out a little bit. And give me the support of your lumbar and your sacrum, and then go in. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So go in and out a little bit. Lift your chest, navel to your chest, so let's not collapse the chest. But you have to lift from the pelvic floor, from behind the pubic bone, to pull the tail down. Lift from behind the pubic bone up to your chest and see what kind of front thigh extension you can get. How's that feel? Good. Put the back knee. Let's go back. Uh-huh. And then inhale and come out. And rest a moment. Now, if you need a pad under the back knee, yeah, not everybody can do this one. Just put a little blanket like this. Stacy will grab you a blanket. Anybody need a blanket? Okay, let's do it again. Right leg forward. Open it up sideways. Open it up sideways so it's up under both knees. Okay, let's talk about it a little bit more. As you're going in on this side, we say we start with the knee over the ankle bone, but then there's something else. Move your foot that way, Kim. It should be ankle bone, knee, and sits bone, the middle of your hip, in a straight line. So very often we swing the right foot forward and we put the right foot too close to the midline, yours is fine, and then you move it over a little bit and, and turn the knee out and tuck the hip in. And you also don't want to cross, come on, move this leg over, move the midline. Don't cross the midline. It takes a little practice, some of you may find you have to go in front of the mirror. Mm -hmm. When you back your hips up, and then pull your tail down, move your right sits bone forward, open your chest, and bend the right knee and your mouth. Now bend the right knee. Now bend the chest. There. Uh-huh. And then 
inhale and back out again. And then one last time, bend the knee in. Lift your navel, lift your navel, lift your chest. Uh -huh. And then come out and rest. Okay, one wow. last time, question. I mean, you're not letting this knee fall out, right? I mean, a bit. This is what you want to, and the Dan's going to watch this right now. Okay, go ahead, show that knee falling out. So you don't want the knee to fall, show how it falls out, you don't want it to fall. Yeah. Because this leg and this leg go together, they have a relationship. So if this knee goes out too far, this hip collapses forward, then she torques her SI joint more. Okay? And you only have to feel that once to know that's not what you want. All right, so you try and keep it in line, but the turning of the knee is only just enough to get the hip to tuck in. Okay. So you're looking at turning the skin around the bones. Okay. You're getting the muscles to wake up to support the joints, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not just that the joints are going to flop around. Something has to stay stable. Something has to move. Okay. And then pull your tailbone down and take your navel in and up. Now pull the flesh of your buttocks down and take your navel in and up. Now press, the, <laughs> now press the rear foot into the floor and take your navel in and up. Ah, there. So it's much more, there's a lot going on, but the state position becomes very stable. It's not moving all over the place. Very specific, very stable, okay? Left leg forward. That's it. So there's some leverage. There's a reciprocal inhibition principle at place. So your front foot is going forward one, maybe about six inches anyway. So once you've got the knee and the hip in alignment, pull the flesh of the buttocks down, lift the navel in and up. Now press the rear shin into the floor and pull the flesh of the buttocks down again. So you're using the muscles on the back of your body to release the muscles on your front of your body. So there it is, reciprocal inhibition, once again. Come up taller on your legs. Yeah. Come up taller on your legs. Yeah. So you can lift your chest more. And come on out. Now you've got every dimension of the leg.